I left my family. I left my kids. I left my nightclubs, my parking company, $35 million to fight the fight. Welcome everyone to another episode of Mafia Truths with John A. Light. I'm Felix Levine and to my right, the star of the show, John A. Light. Before we get into it today, quick reminder, subscribe to our Patreon, bonus content, everything goes up there early. Uh, we've been selling these bats that John's going to show you in a second. Um, sign bats, sign baseballs, all that you guys get for a discounted price if you're a member of the Patreon. And uh, another quick reminder to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, like this video, all that good stuff. We show them real quick the, the bat, I, I think it's around here. Um, we've been selling a lot of them, we're going to get a, a new order in soon. Uh, you think we get a close-up of that, Josh? I think jo uh, John has been signing these, uh, signing baseballs. We're going to have a uh, little, uh, yeah, there you go. You can see the signed baseball. Um, John has a new book coming out soon that he's going to be providing signed copies of. So all of that you can find now on johnalight.com. Uh, it should be up by the time you're watching this video. So that's exciting. If you have any questions or concerns, reach out to me at felix.levine, and I'll help you get set up or get one of those uh, esteemed bats, balls, all that good stuff. Um, and then lastly, uh, if you're listening to this, please rate and review this five stars on Apple's podcast app. That goes a long way. And uh, KCL Automotive, John will tell you about them. And uh... KC Automotive is uh, 98 Henry Street, East Stroudsburg, PA. It's a full service uh, auto, auto body and uh, mechanic shop inspections. Ask my cousin Steve, Chris at the front, Davey in the back. And it's a one-stop shop. Anything you need at the uh, place, buy here, pay here, use cars, we do it all. If anybody's uh, interested, 10% off, you mentioned this show, or call direct to KCL Automotive. And that number is 570-534-8497. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Rabbi Newlander, tell me about the gentleman. Uh, it's a crazy story. So I moved, this is in the mid-90s, I moved to Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I live on Brick Road. Around a corner from my house is a synagogue. And uh, about a mile from there, uh, the Newlanders live. Uh, Carol Newlander and Fred Newlander, the rabbi. And I'm a big jogger, so I jog, and I always jog past their house. I don't know where their house is, but I know it's in the area after I'm under investigation. And uh, they also have a cookie shop that I used to, a bakery, and I used to go into the bakery. And then uh, a gym that I used to go to uh, in Voorhees off... Uh, uh, Centennial Boulevard? No, it's not on Centennial. It was around the corner from the police station in Voorhees. Uh, I forget the name of the gym. Uh, so I, I used to go to the same gym. I'd play racquetball. I'd work out. And I used to play racquetball once in a while against the rabbi. I didn't know who he was. And, you know, you're just playing different guys while you're playing there. And uh, one day, it's all over the news, the rabbi's wife was killed. Carol Newlander was killed. Uh, beat to death. I'm not sure if that came out initially that she was beat to death. And their son actually worked EMS, who ends up finding the mom bludgeoned to death. And when the investigation starts, uh, I'm driving home one day with Claudia and the kids. I have all four kids. I'm in a Mercedes. And, you know, uh, I had three kids at the time. Actually, my son Matthew wasn't born yet. It was about 94, 95. And there's a, a black gentleman and a white gentleman sitting on my porch. And uh, Claudia says, wow, look at this. It's the Jehovah Witness again. <laughs> I look at it and I give it that like shake of my head, smile, and it says, listen, it's written all over them. They're either agents or cops. It was obvious. And I said, listen, take the kids and go in the house. So I said, what, what do you guys want? What's the, what's the problem? And they said, did you hear about the, the Newlander murder? I said, actually, I just heard something. It was a, a radio host, Nancy Phillips, that was covering it also at the time that was uh, later on, she starts attacking me that she thinks I'm the, uh, the, uh, the killer. So I asked the, uh, you know, the detectives, uh, what do you guys want? And they says, well, Camden County District Attorney's Office asked us to come see you. I says, why me? And uh, they said there was a partial plate of your car past their house uh, somebody took. Now, I live there. Uh, my house is there. I jog past all the things I just said. So that's not, you know, too unusual. And I said, well... What would that have to do with me? I'm not really understanding. They're basically accusing me of being a killer. So I said to them, you guys really think I did something like that? And they said to, to me, uh, well, actually, we don't think you did. And I said, yeah, I know you're going to tell me that. You're going to try to get me to talk to you. I says, but 
The reason I'm going to talk is because this is ridiculous. I said, uh, somebody killed a woman. I'm the guy that kills the woman, uh, kills the guy that killed the woman. I'm not the guy that kills the woman. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, if, and I, because I asked them, why are you coming at me? And they says, we have information from informants that uh, a mob enforcer carried out a hit, a paid uh, uh, hit. Mm. So, you know, I had a ton of money at the time. I had property in four years at three houses. I had seven other properties at properties in Florida. I says, are you guys kidding me? I says, what can they possibly pay me to do something like that? 50000 what am I going to do with that? I says, it's nonsense. I says, do I look like I need money to do that? And since when? is a mob guy accused of, uh, you know, doing hits on women. And he says, well, have you ever been to the gym? So now I says, okay, now I see where you guys are going. I said, listen, respectfully, you guys got to go. I said, uh, you have anything else to say? Or would you come in and take a lie detector? I said, you guys got to go. Here's my lawyer's name. Mike Pinsky was my attorney. He was a well-known attorney down there affiliated with the mob and Philadelphia mobsters. And they said to me, uh, you know, you're accused of a lot of murders. So I said, what are you talking about? And at the same time, two guys got killed off of train tracks. And uh, so they were accusing me of different murders. Plus, I was under investigation at that time for, I don't know, seven or eight murders that was being, you know, investigated in New York for. So, uh, you know, I had a reputation, obviously, by now as uh, being a killer and a forcer. And uh, I said to detective, uh, why would you guys think it's me? And they said, well, and now I already answered my own question because I knew I just wanted to hear them. They said, well, you live right around the corner from the synagogue. You jog past that house. We know you're a runner. We know you go into the bakery. We know you go to the gym where Fred goes. I go, who's Fred? Because at that time, I didn't know who Fred was in, in Newlander. Later on, I learned his first name. And, you know, that's the rabbi. Now, they're not accusing the rabbi at those days of killing his wife. If it was any other husband, they would have been the first, you know, uh, prime suspect. But because he's a rabbi, and the synagogue is around the corner from my house, it's beautiful synagogue. There, is there a big Jewish community in that area? Yeah, Jewish okay. and, uh, you know, Italian, Jewish, other nationalities, but Jewish, yeah. So that synagogue is really beautiful. Now, I've been in that synagogue also. Where I had a, a, a veterinarian, he ends up dying of an aneurysm, but you know, some of the guys he knew and friends, they went there. I forget why I went there, but I went for an occasion. So I was also in that synagogue. But, it, it, you know, it's these areas are a small, small community. And, you know, so people, everybody know each other. Everybody knows me. I'm all over the news. And then, again, uh, George Anastasia and, and Dave, uh, his co-host on his show, uh, the mob show they did, they did a, a segment of me getting locked up and showing me, I was bald at the time, and they're showing me going to court in 1990 or 91 for the assault. They showed me on another segment for a gun charge, uh, and then later on some other things. So I was on a segment, and so I'm all over the news. Everybody in the area knows I'm a gangster. Everybody's got me down as a killer and an enforcer. So they didn't let up. Now, unbeknownst to me, I'm under investigation prior to that, and then fast forward a little bit, uh, a couple of weeks go by, and I have a neighbor that's behind my house, but over to the left. It's another block around the corner, but the angle of their house to my house is a clear run. And I have a jacuzzi in my back. I have a double deck. I got a jacuzzi, and I have a privacy fence. And I don't know at the time. I'm joking with Claudia, and we're in the jacuzzi. We come from the bathroom into the jacuzzi. And, you know, I would never wear clothes, and I jump in because I got the privacy fence, and there's a helicopter hovering above us. And she says, this is late at night. She says, uh, what's that helicopter? Now I'm joking only. And I said, well, that's for us. <laughs> and she was, ah, ah, And then all of a sudden the light flashes down on us and it stays on us for, I don't know, 30 seconds. And they must have been taking pictures of whatever they were doing. So when they leave a couple days later, my neighbor, who I'm good friends with, the FBI, or the, not the FBI, state detectives, went to her house and set up surveillance team on her back window and porch to take pictures of me in the backyard because I used to meet guys on my back deck. And so somebody must have gave them intel that I was in the back deck with guys mm -hmm. and they're taking pictures and filming me. So- How do you find that out she told you? She calls my mom. Because oh. my mom used to get ahead on an 800 West where she worked and she worked at another place, Lewis Christians. I don't know which one it was. I think it might've been Lewis Christians at that time, I, either one. And she calls up and she says, you have a hair appointment. Then she calls her again and says, yeah, you have a hair appointment, you're missing. But she's not calling my house, calling my mother. When I went to my mother's house, 
She tells me the story. Donna keeps calling me, and I don't have a hair appointment. I go, how many times did she call you? Now, my mother's younger then, so I knew she wasn't just, you know. So I said, let me go by there. So I drive around, and I go by there. I go, Donna, wow. why do you keep calling my mother? I says, I know something's up. I knew something was up the way she kept calling. And she goes, you ain't going to believe this. And she tells me, they asked to use my house to surveil you. They're at my house taking pictures. So I said, really? <laughs> so she says, yeah. And I got a really good friend of mine. He's a regular guy. He does concerts. He's originally from New York. He pulls in front of my house late at night with a cigar, an overcoat, a stretch limo. This guy, John, that we're really good friends. So I said, you know, they're going to think you're a gangster, taking pictures all over the place here. Yeah. And he came with his son. Then, uh, at, 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 you know, other guys came over. And the same thing, regular guys and some legitimate people. And uh, I'm saying, why are they surveilling me to this extent? And then that's when the detectives came to my house you know, again. And they said, you know, we want to speak to you. So I go see my lawyer. And I said to him, you know, they're trying to bring me in for questioning. You, know, you might as well let me go in. I says, answer these stupid questions. So they leave us alone. And he goes, no, John. He says, this is what they're going to do. They're going to be set up questions and they're going to indict you. Or they're going to try to lock you up because they want to keep the notoriety in the news because you're always in the newspaper. He says, and it'll keep... The, the case going. Really crazy thing is the son ends up hiring my lawyer to, you know, to handle the case for him. Mm -hmm. I don't know for what reason, but he had, he hires the same. And he, my lawyer tells him completely off the record between me and you, John has nothing to do with this. So you don't waste time. I'm his attorney. And legally I would have to tell you, well, I'll tell you, I can't handle you because there's a conflict. And I said to the son, to my lawyer says, tell him if he wants to meet with me in the office, I'll answer anything he wants. Let him know that I'll help him try to find out who did it. And uh, the son was, you know, grateful, said, thank you. And then it comes out later on that the father, Fred Newlander, actually hired somebody to uh, kill his wife. So this sick bastard knew he was hiring guys to kill his wife and knew the son worked EMS would find his own mom. Same. So you got to see the mind. He was fooling around with another woman, and the woman wasn't in on it, and he wow. wanted to kill the wife so he can be with this. this That's I never heard of that story. Oh, it was all. It was one of those famous cases in 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 uh, South Jersey and Philadelphia area. And, 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 so know, they really tried to uh, get you on that. Yeah, they investigated for years. They, this one, this went on for years. This wasn't. They couldn't break the case, and I don't know eventually how they found out. That they hired. A, I believe it was a, some like half as you know, low-life junkie that got another guy and they flipped on each other and, and told the whole setup of Fred Newlander and then eventually they lock up the rabbi. And Nancy Phillips never apologizes to me because I was sending her messages that, you know, and this is like 1998 when I was in Allenwood, I was still sending her messages. You know, where's your apology? You know, for, you know, I got kids, I got a daughter, why would you accuse me? I'm the guy that would kill whoever killed her. And I told, the, the you know, my lawyer to tell Fred Newlander, uh, son, if you find out who did it, let me know. And, you know, basically I was telling him I'll kill him for you. How long was Fred Newlander out before he went into jail? Oh, it was years. I don't remember exactly. Wow. but I And mean, he still was the rabbi the whole time? Uh, I'm not sure if he stayed as rabbi. At the beginning, he did for sure. And I, I believe he got locked up and he got out. And then I think he beat one of the cases and then they re I'm really not did, sure the details of the rest of it. Did you ever meet him? Oh, I knew him. I mean, I I so seen play, him. Oh, I went to his, I went to the synagogue. I I was there oh, right. also. I knew who he was. I just didn't really recognize him. You know, I knew the name. I, I mean, did you like ever see him after the the murder of his wife? Uh, that I don't remember. I don't think he went to the gym anymore after that. I think he he stopped going to the gym. Interesting. But uh, I mean, it was the, the most insane case I was ever accused of, and they just kept saying, uh, you know, they talked to people in New York, and you know. I had the reputation of, you know, I was under, listen, at that time, I was already accused of what, what have killing Georgie Gross. I was killed, accused of the Jamaicans. I was yeah. accused of so many murders at the time. Bruce got her up, you know, involved with that. And I was involved in so many murders, different things with Frankie Burke, with a couple of murders. So these guys were, you know, knew I was shooting guys all over. So they're saying, if it's a New York, Philadelphia connection, they said, somewhere they got that he, he, I was hired, or somebody was hired from New York mm. to Philly. And I'm the likely guy because I'm the guy that lives there. So this investigation, it was this day and night of uh, them investigating me, torturing me, following me. It was, you know, it was insane, that, that, you know, 
I mean, I, I understand why they put so much effort into an investigation of a woman getting killed, especially as sick as the way the husband, uh, Fred Melinda, had his wife killed. But I couldn't understand why they would even believe that somebody like me would do something like that. Hey, everybody out there, for people that don't know, I have a Patreon uh, channel that you can subscribe to, please. And uh, we'll talk about content that is not out on YouTube, is exclusive. Uh, we'll cover Q&A on a regular basis once a month. We sell my baseball bats and the autographed, and we will talk about content that you won't hear anywhere else but here on Patreon. Thank you, everybody. Please reach out and subscribe. Thank you. Was that the only ever time you got, like, really wrongfully accused? No, I was accused every day. If something happened, everybody accused me because I was so violent. So, you know, all the, anything that happened, um, you know, and, and you got to remember, I was down at, with the Philadelphia mob. I was friendly with the Turchies, whose father was a concierge at the time. So you know, the son's still my friend. I was friend with uh, Tommy Horsehead and these guys, you know, so I was, uh, you know, got friendly with that regime of guys, uh, you know, back in those days. That's stressful, though. I mean, well, your I... whole life, this is why I'm always talking to kids, crime don't pay to stay off the street because regardless, and you know, you got to remember, whatever things I'm doing is under such scrutiny because everybody's looking for me. Everybody's watching me, so it's really hurting my income, too, because I can't be as brazen and as yeah. cocky because I know that, you know, they're probably bugging my car. They're mm -hmm. probably bugging my house. I wasn't talking anywhere. I wasn't talking on my back deck. I know they have the Zooms so they can Zoom and try to listen to your conversation because they do it to us in prisons. So, you know, they got these Zoom uh, recorders. Yeah, no, so the trucks are driving the perimeter. They got them. Yeah. So, you know, now I'm not talking anywhere. I'm more paranoid. I got enough pressure. I got a case going uh, a little bit after that with uh, John Kelly, who ends up testifying in order of protection against me. He rats in, and I end up copping a plea because he's cooperating against me. So I had things going on. And, you know, I understood him also because we robbed him. And, I, you know, it wasn't my choice that we robbed the guy, but he still cooperated against me, put me in prison. Did, did your wife or Claudia know uh, everything that was going on? No, nah, I never. You know, listen, one thing. What I, did she think that she, you did? Well, she knew it was an investigation. I told her on that. You know, it was all over the news. So it was on radio shows. It was in the newspapers. So I said to her, you know, I wouldn't ever do nothing. She goes, I know. I said, listen, I'm accused of a lot of things, but that I would never do. To answer your question earlier, my biggest vindication was I don't mind getting accused of killing a gangster. I didn't mind getting accused of shootings. But when they're accusing me of these low-life crimes like this, and I have children, there's a community of right. people that know me, everybody I owned. At that time, I was part owner of the Coliseum. The Coliseum was a big, it was a nightclub. It was a skating rink, practice rink of, of the Philadelphia Flyers. And, you know, different guys. Uh, Josh is not even been there. So, you know, guys like Josh, you know what it is. And, and Kelly was, uh, you know, one of the guys involved in things. He used to play for the Philadelphia Flyers. Tough guy, real good guy. You don't want people that know you in the community right, you right. Know, at, at the time. I know a lot of good people in the community, and they know I'm a gangster. That's one thing. People accept that because they Did know they you know don't know that you were violent? Well, everybody knows I was violent. Okay. I mean, I was hurting guys left and right Did, everywhere. Did your did, that my, my question was, did your wife know the extent of your violence? Well, my ex-wife. Your ex-wife. Yeah. <laughs> and she knows because things, a lot of things happen and she's seen a lot of things. My oh, ex-wife's right. seen a lot. Right. Actually, the shooting on my property with all the guys that came to kill me that I killed, she was very aware of that. She was aware of another guy uh, that we stabbed up and batted. She seen me bat a couple people. Uh, I, I batted two Krasinowski brothers. When they jumped in front of my car, she was in the car with me. I jumped out, I batted the shit out of him. Actually, I chased him and I kicked his door in and I batted him in the house too. And his father came down, I believe his father and his mother. I felt bad really with the mother and father and I told the father, pulled a gun and I said to him, I'll be back tomorrow, I'll fight your other son. I says, but what would you do if you were in a car with your wife and two guys charged your car when you're riding? I mean, right. obviously they're on drugs or something. Yeah. Uh, you know, I said, but you know, and these guys ain't gangs. They were big guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, John was a big kid, 6'4 or something. What's the conversation like with your kids when, you know, they see their dad accused in the news of, you know, killing the wife of a rabbi? Did you? Yeah, that was, you know, I had, the, my kids were young. But, I, you know, my kids were like three, four years old, right. you know, at the time. Right. Uh, they were babies. But, you know, I had that conversation with them years later. Uh, you know, when I came up to prison with me and see me in 96, and I said they were a little older. 
And I told them, you know, those bad things that daddy was accused of, they know of it because they go to school with all the kids. Right. So everybody's scared of my, you know, the whole na area knows, you right. know, and I live on a beautiful property. It's a, it's a, you know, it's an estate. I don't right. have an average thing. I'm a young guy. You pull into my driveway at seven, eight blocks. I have three hours. I got a boxing ring. I got baseball cages, half court basketball. I got a built in yeah. pool. I'm, you know, I'm 28 years old. So people aren't stupid. And everybody's riding their quads, motorcycles. I got go-karts. I mean, I got every toy there is. Yeah, I wish I could have came. Through. Yeah, they used to call it, uh, instead of Disneyland, they used to call it A-Light Land. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun. That must have been so fun. Oh, I loved it. I had a lake on there, and we'd fish on the lake and, you know, uh, box. And How things. long did you get to enjoy that for? Oh, well, I had it for a good 20 years. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so you got your Well, I, when your I went on the run, nobody would have gave this up. That's what I said. Uh, when people are saying... I gave it up for the guys that I didn't even like. At this time, I don't like Gotti. I don't like any of them. And I'm protecting them and other guys, and I'm on the run. And these guys will meet in the FBI. That's I gave up a $10 million estate. I gave up all my properties, my clubs, my parking companies, everything, to protect guys that I think are just full of shit. And that's why I always call everybody out and say, why does everybody only ask me about the violence? You know, mm -hmm. Why don't you ask any of these guys? They never did anything. Yeah. That's why, and I'm always asking them, well, check them. Yeah. Do what you do to me. There are people that screw, I mean, most of the people are 99% of good guys. I'm talking about the dummies, the 1% that don't read Forbes magazine to get the, yeah. the fact check, yeah. fact check it. But, you know, all this work I've done, nobody's done it, I know that. And, and this is why I tell the kids, crime don't pay, don't live this life, it's bullshit. Well said. Um, check out that Forbes article though, that you're talking about. It's a great article. It's about uh, John and... Uh... Dave Gentile. And Dave Gentile, a former FBI agent that uh, developed a uh, great, great friendship, uh, like family. And uh, I owe him a lot for the uh, staying the course and changing my life. Um, great guy. And, you know, when people talk nonsense, there's another, you know, there's so many of them I can name that uh, really gentlemen. And, uh, you know, I'm going to say something I didn't say another thing. So we'll say it again. I'm pro police, pro America, pro, pro veterans, and everybody knows. Uh, you know, I love this country and I, and, uh, I respect uh, people living a positive life. And that's all we're trying to say is live a positive life, do the right thing with your life. Don't be a knucklehead like I was in the past. And, you know, I'm the first guy to call myself an idiot and a knucklehead and a dummy for what I did. So uh, it's a positive message and I hope everybody listens to it. Don't act like those keyboard warrior tough guys because that's a nonsense way to live. Perfect. Uh, last Quick reminder, if you haven't done so, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, our Patreon, we're obviously always talking about because we uh, all the content goes up there early, bonus content, Q&As, all that good stuff, discounted prices for our signed baseballs, signed bats that, I, that are around here that we showed you in the beginning, uh, when John's new book comes out. A signed copy of that book. Uh, Lou Romano did the book, and uh, I'm going to make my comeback. The only thing is if I if I get a hit, I can only go to first base. If I try to get a triple, I'm going to take their motorized uh, wheelchair. I get a lift. <laughs> what a lift. <laughs> All that good stuff. If you want to purchase some of that merchandise, John's books, everything uh, John-related, johnnylight.com, and then uh, follow us on Instagram at Mafia Truths with John A. Light. Follow me on Instagram at Felix.Levine. John's Instagram should be up hopefully by the time you're seeing this at True John A. Light. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it. That's it, guys. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, thank you for listening and tuning in. Subscribe. I'll see you guys. Thank you. Girls. Girls.